and they're off. Racing away for the Grade 1 Turner's Mersey Novices Hurdle. It's two and a half miles, ridden away from the start is Stony Man as they race towards the first of their 11 flights. And prominence is the Grey Hallwood, together with the Mayor You Wear It Well at jump number one. Ermi Allen also right up in that leading line as they all skip safely to the other side of their opening hurdle. You Wear It Well, moving through between horses to lead narrowly from the wider out Hallwood. And then Ermi Allen. Ahead of Let's Be Clear About It in light blue and orange colours. Maroon and white for Call Survivor is next. And the green and white stripes, the orange cap there for authorised speed. Followed closely by Irish Point and the double green to the inside is Dark Raven. Another length and a half away to Springwell Bay and then blow your wad with a noseband on. That dark blue and mauve check jacket. Further back to Uncle Bert with Katira and then Crambo. And at the rear of the field is Stony Man. Head down the side of the race course, being led by the mayor. You wear it well. Under Gavin Sheehan, now shows by length or so. From Hallward, who races in second. Ermi Zalen back in third. Let's be clear about it in fourth. Then call Survivor, Authorised Speed and Irish Point. Ahead of Dark Raven and Springwell Bay. Blow your wad and Katira. Uncle Burton Crambo and then Stony Man. On towards jump number three. Over this flight of hurdles, we're all safely over. Hallward and you wear it well, the disputing pair, as they run towards the middle flight up the home straight. And just in advance of let's be clear about it. And Hallward was slightly untidy over that flight. And on they go now towards their next obstacle. Number five, and it'll be the 11th and last next time around. You wear it well, Ermi Zelen, let's be clear about it. And Call Survivor are the leaders ahead of Irish Point and an authorised speed and blow your wad. Dark Raven towards the inside there, and the two turn green. Hallwood has lost that good early position wider out that grey. And Blow Your Wad and Springwell Bay in front of Katira and Crambo in the pink. Then Uncle Burton about three or four lengths away to find Stony Man. They've got a lap to go in the Turner's Mersey Novices Hurdle being led by You Wear It Well. You Wear It Well from Emmy Zalen. Let's be clear about it. Races in third. Cool Survivor on the turn in fourth position. An Irish point and authorised speed and Dark Raven from Springwell Bay. Blow your wad and Crambo. Another one and a half lengths away to Katira. A neck further back to Uncle Bert. Then Hallward, who clearly looks to have done his running now. He's second to last. The back marker is Stony Man as they turn into the far side. As they do so, you wear it well. Continues to show out in front from Ermi Zelen. And let's be clear about it. Then Cool Survivor and authorised speed ahead of Irish Point and then Dark Raven and Springwell Bay. Then Crambo wider out from Blow Your Wad and Katira. Then came Uncle Bert, eight lengths away to Stony Man and Hallwood looks like pulling up before getting to the next flight of hurdles. They're running towards the seventh then. You wear it well. A half a length over Ermi Zelen. Then authorised speed. Dark Raven has fallen there. Dark Raven is a faller at flight number seven. On they go to the final jump down the back. You wear it well. Joined by Ermi Zelen and authorised speed. Hot on the heels of the leaders and is let's be clear about it in light blue and orange. Then came Cool Survivor from Blow Your Wad and Crambo, who's getting into this in the pink jacket. Then came Irish Point and Springwell Bay. Katira yet to make her move in front of Uncle Bert and Stony Man remains the bat marker. They're about to head down the side of the race course, and it's still a narrow call for you. Wear it well from Authorised Speed, who is in second place now. Ermi Zelen is back in third. Let's be clear about it, is in fourth. Then Blow Your Wad and Cool Survivor, still with every chance, maroon and white silks. Then the black sleeves of Irish Point in front of Crambo. Springwell Bay in that white jacket now looking to edge into this as they're racing back towards saying They've got three more flights of hurdles to take in the Turner's Mersey Novices Hurdle. And as they approach three from the end, you wear it well, joined by Authorised Speed. And let's be clear about it. It. Omi Zelenis, next call survivor has gone. Went on the heels of the leaders there. They're racing towards two out. Let's be clear about it. Joins in with authorised speed. And Omi Zelen, you wear it well. Now drops out of contention. The grey Irish point is staying on. Uncle Bert's been pulled up before two out. Racing down towards the final flight of hurdles. And it's Irish point under Davy Russell, who've come through to leave from Omi Zelen. Katira's now back into third place, having been way back. Then let's be clear about it. They're up the running now. And it's 
Irish Point, who leads the way by a good three lengths. Tukatir in second, Ermi Salem back in third. They're clear from the others, and Irish Point is strong to the line for Gordon Elliott in the Rob Corr Silks. Irish Point goes on to win. The Mersey Novice hurdle under hands of David Russell. Katira with second, Ermi Zalen third. Then let's be clear about it. You wear it well, Springwell Bay and Crambo. Yeah, Gordon Elliott alongside me. Uh, and people are going to say, Gordon, that's it. I know for you, but for Davy Russell, a second grade one winner of the week, that must give you an enormous sense of satisfaction. I was listening to him. Obviously, Jack not being back. Um, do you know, Davy said enough is enough after Cheltenham. You also feel great. And I gave him a ring and I says, look, I don't want you to go like that, Davy. Uh, we've been together too long. I'd free to go out in a better note. Um, so, look, I'm delighted for him to, to win another grade one. Uh, delighted for the whole team in Cullen Tra. Uh, for uh, Brian and Carmel, uh, um, Rob, Rob Corr uh, and Robin Courtney. Um, no, great, this is another winner. I'm and, and at what point of the race did you think we might just have? I was delighted when I seen the few horses uh, kicking on now at the home straight. I said, beautiful, we're going to get a lovely lead. Uh, the faster they went, I knew the better it was going to suit me. So uh, I just said to David, let them race away, and if we're good enough, we'll have a go in between the last two, and it worked out perfect. Ultimately, do you think he's a horse that's, that's, that's going to want further? Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. And Punches Town on the agenda? No, not at all. No. That's going to be it. We put him away now. Uh, no, uh, no, no. We said we come here with a few bullets. Um, look, we going to be strong at Punches Town, so we do our best. So we keep trying and doing our best. This has been a good meeting for you. I know Cheltenham has in the past, but off the back of no top level successes at, at, at Cheltenham, this this is just a tonic for you. Is it? Well, I won the stairs hurdle. Oh, you did win the stairs hurdle! My yeah, goodness, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, no, listen. We, you, <laughs> I was just going to ask you about him as yeah. well. We hit the crossbar of plenty of horses, but a few of these horses we didn't go to Cheltenham with. Uh, you know, we kept them for here, and uh, thankfully it paid off. And what about Side the Burley? How, how did he come out of Cheltenham? He's in brilliant form, but like Side of the Burley, Side of the Burley. It depends what you know. After two hurdles, what form he's in. Um, he, he, he has this big day in the sun every year, and hopefully today we're not on. We wish you all the best. Cheers, Thank Gordon. You. Good Thanks. Well Thanks. Well, it's no doubt that Gordon Elliott and this man, David Russell, made the right decision to obliterate those bad memories at Cheltenham with this performance at Aintree. Already two grade ones, and it could yet get better. Many congratulations. The latest win on Irish Point. Talk me through it. Yeah, it all went very according to plan. Uh, we jumped out. We got a lovely position and um, jumped fantastic. I was travelling, you know, we know, and I know he stays as well. So... Um, just very professional at this early part of the year, he was very immature mm. and um, he, I'd say the early races might have caught up in him a little bit and then Gordon just slowed it all down, brought him back to Nace and with here in mind and the bit of rain around helped as well, you know, but I think it's credit to Gordon and um, Rob Core, the decisions they made to benefit the horse and I think they've maxed that with him this year, you know. So missing Cheltenham, going a bit calmer. Yeah, I'd say if you had to keep going to prepare him for Cheltenham, it might have just emptied the tank. Okay. So they stopped before the tank was empty, rebuilt it up, got a huge confidence booster in Nace, and then come, he came here back to the form he was in Fairy House because mm -hmm. he kind of has seemed to have left, lost that a little bit. Uh, I rode him in uh, Le Leopardstown and he just didn't seem to be as happy and he does like a bit of juice in the ground, so we were lucky that this part of the season came up soft. And what was the pace like out there? Was it a relentless race, that? No, I think no, we were, it, yeah. Was it, was it? I think the boys up front were controlling were it well. Right? Okay. Yeah, okay. so, and uh, but my horse had jumped well, so I didn't have to go forwards or backwards, you know. What do you see him as next year? Uh, he could be anything. Uh, he, he, all along I thought he was immature, but today he just seemed to have come of age. So after a summer's grass, and when he comes in next year, you know, he does stay well and he jumps fantastic. Uh, so he, he could go chasing, he could go stay hurdling. I'm not quite sure, but I do think that um, that a summer's grass and then come back in and see what happens. And this must be very satisfying for you. I mean, we spoke earlier after Jerry Colomb yesterday, but now two great ones. I mean, this is this is what you worked and you agreed with Gordon that you were going to do. Yeah, well, I kind of I, I left out my wife yesterday. She was actually very upset after Cheltenham. She was. She was very upset after the whole thing and she kept, her, her dad passed away recently and the whole thing had caught up in her and she, she stressed with me that I needed to uh, I needed to get back in and not finish on the note that I finished on and then obviously Gordon jumped in as well and between the two of them they, they, reached, they, they made it very comfortable for me to go ahead and do it. I was happy enough to finish after Cheltenham. I'm big enough to accept it. You know, I, yeah. I'm lucky I can go back in the years and remember them, but now this really does put a shine on the, on the trophy. You know? I'm really pleased to hear that. And Galvin, 
yet to come. How yeah. are you feeling about that? Oh, it's just another race at the moment. I know it's not just another race, but you and me standing here, it's just another race. And that's a special horse for you, though. Ah, he's a special horse. He's always got. He's always been good to me. But and Ronnie is here for fun. He understands the game. So we'll go out with that that mindset, and whatever happens, happens. Very best of luck. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.